Hello, my name is Patra Kartnett. I'm the developer of Collativity, a new plugin with Studio. This is getting started uh, at zero two. We're going to talk about the settings and how to to set up, configure some of these. Initially, when you s install the plugin, uh, you won't have any language rates, clients, but you will have uh, the quality metrics. You will have four pre-installs with these. You will have the new uh, Taos DQF, uh, the SAJ2450, which is probably what we've all been using over the years, the MQM core and the Leeds QA metric. So you can also set up your own. So you can take any one of those standards. Uh, you can call it, say, number two. Um, you can define different severities, uh, give it a name, and also set up the quality assessment settings, which is nothing more than a uh, allowing you to define when a document fails or passes. Uh, understanding if there's uh, this amount of penalties in that amount of words. So if for every 1,000 words, if there's more than 50 penalties, or 50 points in this case, well then it will fail. Okay, this is kind of an automated way to to understand how good uh, the quality is with uh, the assessment of um, the quality. You click Save, and that is create a new standard view. You can choose, well, I don't like this, I don't like this, and I don't like this. There's no need for it to be in this standard, and that's it, you've created your own. I don't, uh, but I will not keep that for now. I'll just keep the standard ones uh, available. Backup settings is something you can set up to suit your needs. It creates a full copy of all of the databases. That uh, let's have a look at the databases here. Uh, let's try bring this into view. Okay. So when you install the software, I kind of um, you can choose where to set up your backup folder. I've obviously kept it in a, a subfolder of where the databases are, are housed or saved. So when you install for the first time, you will only have the projects and the and the settings databases. These are SQLite databases. Um, when you create a backup, obviously the backups will. Uh, be created in this folder here, or where you define, and it will create a nice uh, zip archive of all of your 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 s your settings, your projects, and ensuring that you have a a backup in case something we we n we don't like to talk about when things go wrong, but you know things do go wrong, and, and it's kind of uh, useful to have a, a a system to back up and manage that uh, for you. Okay, so I would recommend you use that. Um, obviously, not for. <laughs> Not suggesting that the, there is anything wrong with the software, but you know we were all uh, professionals. We we understand that things can go wrong, and it's nice having a, a complete backup of everything you're doing. Okay, I um, for now I'm setting up as a as a day, every day or maybe every every two days or so. Okay, and it uh, compresses that, so it's uh, you know it's it's not so large either to keep those backups. Then we have the activity tracking. So initially when you start the software, it'll start the activity tracker automatically uh, when, when you start Studio. This is not going to be tracking everything as you're, you start Studio. It's only going to be on hold. It's going to be waiting for you to open a document and then it's going to start tracking when you open the document. It's going to stop when you stop, when you close on the document respect respectively. There are a few other options, you know, you should read them, maybe also start, another one interesting is start the activity tracker automatically when a document is opened. So in this case, if you had already already started tracking when you, when you, st when you launch Studio, and you choose to stop activity tracking here, well then it will uh, not be tracking anymore, and then you open up a document, you forget to start the tracking, and uh, you lose some sort of information, some productivity information that you would have otherwise wanted to save. So this option here is useful. So when you open any document, and it'll it'll automatically start the if it's not already started, it will start the tracking for you. Okay. Then you have the record keystroke data. This is uh, something new, and it gives some new, very new advantages. Um, useful uh, information in in managing data that can be used to generate some uh, some very nice reports and also useful data that's uh, for your to statistical data that you can distribute to your clients as well on their requirements depending on the contracts you're going to be using. Okay, so let's have a look at the language rates 
uh, the clients. So my details, uh, incidentally, is your details. I've kind of preset them here, so just to kind of speed up the process of this video. We also have the Taos DQF. We'll talk about that another time. Uh, for now, it's, uh, you just understand that you have your, your key. And, uh, well, let's just talk about that another time. There's a separate video for that. Uh, the general settings is simply general settings. Uh, it's just kind of presets here on how you ha want the layout on your navigation area, um, how you want the layout on your viewer, and uh, the default uh, currency that you're going to be using uh, throughout uh, the settings here that I'm going to show you uh, for the client. So let's create one language rate very quickly. The language rate allows you to create groups with uh, languages in those groups and associate a, a rate to, to them. But let's uh, let's talk about that in a second. So let's just set up a language rate group first. So it's a sort of standard euro. You can associate some default uh, analysis bands. I'll show you what these mean in a second. For now, you just know you can associate them here. These are languages. I'm gonna it's just mean basically all from all any language into any language or from English into to German, from English into Spanish and so forth, okay? We click Save. Um, from this one group, then you can add individual uh, language combinations. So you can say from English into Italian, I have a base rate, which is one... Uh, uh, I'm just inventing these rates, so you know, don't, don't <laughs> assume that they're standard. In by any means, so I have a base rate which is 1.0150, uh, and uh, with uh, that base rate, I will calculate 2% to generate this uh, price or rate, which is basically the rate I will be associating to any word that I uh, see in a category that is exact match. Then I will calculate 20% of this 1.150 to understand how to pay for a word that falls in the category of 99 to 90, uh, 95. And this is basically nothing more. Let's open up a calculator to kind of just see if I'm... see if this is actually doing it correctly as well, maybe. You know, kind of so, so, point 150 uh, by 20% is point 0.03. Okay, then we said, uh, uh, sorry, this one here, and then we said 65% of 0 0.150 is, is this, so, okay, so you get the picture. And this is basically the price you will be paying for every word that falls into that category in the post, um, edit modifications analysis that we will dis be discussing in a different video but I just wanted to make it clear uh, what these uh, these means. You don't have to uh, res do everything. This is kind of an a, a way to automate it. So you give a base rate and automatic ha automatically calculates all of these rates associated with the traditional analysis band structure from Studio. But you can you know choose to uh, modify this in a way that you say well actually this um, Ah well, this is 100% now, so it can't be greater than this. So this uh, this has to be. Uh, so if we say the maximum is that, well then <laughs> you can choose to say, well, this is actually 450, okay, and then that will be calculated from this uh, from this item here, okay. So you can you can have some sort of freedom and leeway. You can't obviously include any. Uh, price rate. There has to be some structure to to managing this, but you you get the picture. Okay, so I'll click uh, instead. I want to put this back to a normal rate. One, one. Let me click OK. And this item is created. There is a cheat here, however. I'm going to remove that. You can uh, create uh, this very quickly, considering the languages that you've set up here. Okay, so you've kind of set up. Uh, these are the source languages and these are all the target languages. The cheat is this, because you can add in multiple rates all in one go, starting from this uh, language or this language. Okay. 
So then any unique language combination from this from the source language to any target language will create automatically like this. Okay, so you click OK and it creates all of these. And you can edit those and you say for all of those rates, I'm starting with this. Okay, this is the base rate. And then but specifically for one language combination, you see it is paid a little bit more. Um, and so forth. You know you can so it's kind of a quick way to, to set that up. Okay, that's enough about the language rates. Uh, now let's talk about the clients. We just set up one client. The Avengers. Then I don't actually have his phone number or fax number. <laughs> then you can associate the default rates um, that you want to apply uh, when you create uh, the project activity uh, records. And you can also set up a default um, hourly rate. And you can kind of say, well, automatically I want this hourly rate pumped into every new project activity that I'm going to be creating and so you can automate it this way and also just we'll set it up like this as well so for every uh, new uh, project activity that we're going to be creating automatically uh, associate this rate uh, to, to that project activity then we have the comparison settings you can understand how you want the information displayed in the uh, comparison reports and we call it metrics these are the quality metrics we just seen. You can also associate one with that that uh, you like. So let's associate the task DQF for now. And with my details, we talked about the activity tracking, we talked about the quality metrics. The task DQF is basically two API keys that we'll be talking about later, the backup. Pro so I think that pretty much covers the settings at this stage. We click save and and that's it. Uh, so this concludes this video. Uh, the next time we will talk about uh, maybe uh, create translating one, setting about a quality project and translating one file and understanding how to read that uh, the information recovered from that uh, translating one file in the reports here. Okay. See you the next time.